recording is going to be fantastic. Um, I have got some just exciting news. I have been um, just overwhelmed with joy with what God has been doing this week. Um, and He works in the most amazing ways. Things when you have, you think there is no way God can go through, God makes an unbelievable way. Um, and I will tell you, if you don't get excited about today, <laughs> mm, let me know so I can pray for you. You know, we never know how God is working through relationships. A lot of times we'll think that we are just meeting people and we're interacting randomly. Like, you'll walk into somewhere, you may, you may interact with, like, uh, the lady behind the counter at, at the quick stop market or whatever, getting gas, or you may think that somebody introducing you to somebody or just, hey, that's great, I'm making a friend, that's awesome. But you don't know how God is working through those situations. Even in situations you may not enjoy. God is still working. And God cares about the small and he works through the small things because what happens is God, he, a lot of times he's testing us. Can you be faithful to me when you think nobody is watching? Can you be faithful to me when you think, I don't really like this situation? Will you be faithful to me? This morning we're going we're gonna to read um, and this goes with our Get Up and Go series because we're about to get up and go as a church. I promise you, God is doing something amazing. And by the time I get to the end of this message, you will know what it is. But man, I'm excited about it. We're going to talk about Joseph this morning. And Genesis 37 is where we're going to start, I think. Is that right, Jerry? Yep. Man, wow. Fantastic. I love this account. Now, I will tell you, I've probably got about 487 verses this morning, but if you'll hang with me, we're going to move through them quick, and I'm going to try to get you out before the Baptist. Amen. So hang with me here. I love this line. It says, this is the account of Jacob and his family. Now, Jacob was the start of a nation, the nation of Israel. Okay. It says when Joseph, this was his son, was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks, worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wife, Bilia and his Zilpah. If I said that wrong, I apologize. They will forgive me, I know. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Any of y'all got little brothers or sisters? Y'all like the little annoying brothers and sisters that always tattletales on you? Did that make you happy? That's what Joseph was doing. So he was creating some tension in the family. And Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob get, had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream. Now, hang on. Before we get any further than that, I'm going to tell you, your words are powerful. And God uses your words. And when you start speaking bad about other people for no reason, God does not bless you for that. All right? And think about this, what the brothers were doing on Joseph. Now, I know he's the little brother that's the tattletale, and now he's got all this, this brand new fancy robe. Here's the other great thing about this. When you see God blessing somebody else with something, don't be mad at him. Don't hold a grudge about it. Don't be jealous for him. Praise God for what God did for them and be excited for them. 
That's hard to do sometimes. But that's what God has called us to do. Let's move on here. They couldn't say a kind word. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him ever more. Let's see this dream here. And we're not going to read that part because we're going to skip just a little bit. But that dream was they were, he, he went to him and said, hey, one day I'm going to be king and y'all are going to bow down to me. If your little brother said that to you, you probably wouldn't like that either. Just like, right, like I'm going to bow down to you. I don't think so. Soon, Joseph had another dream, and he told his brothers about it again. Now, let me tell you, when God speaks to you, you don't have to go tell everybody about it, because not everybody's going to be on your side. And not everybody's going to get the vision when God tells you that. But Joseph had this dream, and he told his brothers about it again. This time, he said, man, this is what's going to happen. Not only are you going to bow down to me, but mom and dad, you are too. Now, I, I would probably be like the family here if Matthew or Michael said, hey, I, I need y'all to bow down to me because that's what his dream said. I'm probably going to rebuke him like they did. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> and again, he told his brothers about it. But while his brothers, go ahead, Jerry, we can go to the next one. But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. See, when God gives people vision, sometimes it will stir in the hearts of others. They may not understand it, but they, if they are in a great relationship with God in heaven, they will understand that it is of God, and they need to take notice. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped. Okay, so I, I skipped ahead a little bit. So what happened was, was Joseph one day was at the house, and he had his coat on, and he was strutting around in his Sunday go to meeting, best of the best, looking real good. <laughs> and his father said, hey, I need you to go out and find the brothers because they're out here tending sheep. You need to go get them, and you need to, you, need to you know, find out what they're doing. So he sent his son off. And when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. A lot of times the world is going to try to take away from you what God has given you. But if you will have faith in Christ, what the enemy means for evil, God will turn around for his glory. Just hang on. And they, they beat him up. They threw him into this cistern. They were going to kill him. And one of the brothers talked him out of it. You always got that older brother that's got some kind of sense. <laughs> Matthew's back there raising his hand. Mm. <laughs> but as we go on in the story, the brothers took this coat that they had taken off of him and they dipped it in blood and they took it back to his father. And when the, when the father recognized it, he said, yes. It's my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him, and Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. He believed he was dead. All hope was lost for him. Let's keep going. Meanwhile, what happened was the brothers kept him in the cistern, and then they sold him to the traders. And they, uh, meanwhile, the Midiac, the Midiac traders arrived in Egypt, where they had already bought Joseph. And they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of, of Egypt. Potiphar was the captain of the palace guard. When Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar, the captain of the guard of, for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of the Egyptian master. Here's the thing. No matter what situation God puts you in, if you will serve him with your best and you will do your work unto the Lord, God will bless you and you will succeed. And it may not look like what you think like. It's supposed to look like. You know, 
Joseph never dreamed that he would be sold into slavery and work for this Egyptian master here. But God blessed him all the way through it because God knew the first and the last. He didn't, you know, if he'd have told Joseph about how he's going to get there, Joseph would have, he would have messed him up and there's no way he would have done that. We would have changed things. But God knows the first and the beginning. You just have to have enough faith that everything that you, that you go through is in God's plan and he is in control. And he succeeded in everything because Joseph was a man of God and he did his work unto the Lord. Potiphar noticed this, realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar and soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's house. For, the, for Joseph's sake, all his household affairs ran smoothly, and his crops and his livestock flourished. Here's the thing. When you do your work in the Lord, the businesses that you work for will be blessed. Yeah. And you know what? They may not even know Christ. But because you are there, if you're walking with the Lord and you are being a man or woman of God, they will be blessed for you and being a part of it. This is what happened here. So, Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owed. Now, see, Potiphar thought he was doing this, but God was directing it. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food. Can you imagine? All you got to do is, what am I going to eat today? Man, that's <coughs> Joseph was very handsome. With a well-built young man. Now, when you're handsome like me and well-built, that's hard. <laughs> hey, well, that ain't funny. What are y'all laughing about? <laughs> kids. <laughs> Joseph was handsome and well-built, it says. Let's go back here just a second. And you know what happens when you get a handsome, well-built young man? The enemy's going to try to tempt you with the sin that just about every man has trouble with. That's the sin of sexuality. And see, what happened was Potiphar's wife saw Joseph and she's like, hmm, he looked good. <laughs> what happened? And the enemy played in her mind. And, and you know, it wasn't Potiphar's wife that, it was, that was at fault. What was happening was Potiphar's wife was allowing herself to be used of the enemy. See, we don't get mad at people. What we get mad at is with the enemy. And we have to understand that people are pawns of what the enemy does. They allow themselves to be used. And that was what was happening with Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife, man, she started coming on to the handsome Joseph there. Son, I can teach you some things. But Joseph refused to look at her. Told her, my master, trust me with everything in his entire household. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day. I know a lot of people struggle with pornography, and what happens is, is when you open your computer or your phone or whatever, pressure comes day after day. But God has a better plan for you. What did Joseph do? He refused to sleep with her. And be kept out of her way as much as possible. What you have to do is keep out of the way. When you know something is going to tempt you, and you know the enemy can, 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 can get you off a of track of what God's mission is, you've got to keep out of the way as much as possible. Do not put yourself into those positions. God gave you a mind. Use it. You know what your triggers are. Don't fall into those temptations. Now, that's easier said than done. And the only way you get delivered is through Jesus Christ. Amen. But when you walk in his power and you ask him, hey God, show me the way. Show me the things that I need to avoid. 
He will do that, but your action is, is you've got to avoid it. Because like Larry and Jake said, if you want to get wet, I mean, if you want to go across the river, you've got to step into the water. You've got to take the action. And the action here is just get out of the way. Let's go on. She came and she grabbed him by his cloak, demanding, come on, sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand and he ran from the house. Potiphar. So his wife in this story goes back to Potiphar. She makes up this story. She says, man, look at here. Joseph got naked in front of me. She was, he was trying to tempt me. He lied, she lied about what Joseph was doing. You ever had people lie for about you? Tell untruths? You don't have to fight that battle. Just like the promises that are on our website, God's already fought them and he's won and he is in control. You have just got to have faith that God is working everything out for his good. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about Joseph and how he had treated her. You know what he did? He stayed out of the way. But, so he took Joseph and threw him into prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. You know what? If you'd have been looking at Joseph from a worldly ghoul, you'd have thought, man, Joseph is counted out. He's done. Potiphar then threw him into prison. But with the enemy meant for evil, God meant for he's going to use it for his good, his glory. But the Lord was with Joseph in prison and showed him his faithful love. How many of you want God to show you his faithful love? Yeah. You know how you get that? You keep being faithful to God. Yeah, amen. No matter what happens, when you feel like things are coming against you and you feel like, man, people are lying on you, you, you feel like you've been thrown into prison, you keep being faithful. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. And when God shows you favor, no man can get your way. That's right. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners. And over everything that happened in the prison, the warden had no worries because Joseph took care of everything. There's a theme going on here. When you will step up to the plate and you will do what God has asked you to do, you bring joy to the people around you. When you are faithful to God and you, your actions are godly, you bring joy to the people around you. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended the royal master. Can you imagine how that happened? I mean, I mean, this is the way my mind works. And I'm sorry this is off track. But the way I figured this happened was that, you know, the, the, the baker probably cooked something like carrot cake and brought it to the king. <laughs> and anybody in their right mind would have ate that and go, here you go. He put that man in prison. He didn't bring me like some good cake like coconut cake or cherry pie. He brought me this old stinky carrot cake. Chocolate cake, yeah, he should have brought me chocolate cake. Or even worse, he took kale to the king. <laughs> I gotta tell you, yesterday we got up, Terry said, hey, you want some kale for breakfast? I was like, are you kidding me? No, I want some eggs and bacon. Kale?
going forward. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Make the next step. And he's and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, who looked after them. God's putting these relationships in order. And they think they're just thrown in prison. When Joseph saw the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today? He asked them. Now he's in prison and he's asking other guards, Why are you worried? Encourage people around you. Lift them up. Take time when you see that they've got troubles. Care enough about them that you will look at them and say, Hey, what's wrong with you? How can I help you today? How can I serve you? Why are you upset? Love people enough that you will do that. Because when you do, And they replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us why they, what they meant. Now, here's the thing. All, that, all Joseph did was do what God has asked us to do and be in relationship with other people. And he cared about people enough to ask them a question. If Joseph had never taken that step of faith and asked them a question, Joseph's future would have never turned out like it did. Think about that. And every opportunity that God gives you a time period to talk to somebody or ask them a question or share your faith with them, if you don't do that, you may be missing the biggest blessing God has ever had in your life. Care enough about people to ask the question. So Joseph interpreted the dream. He said interpreting dreams is God's business. Here's the thing. Joseph had a gift, but he knew that gift wasn't from him. He knew it was from the God Almighty. He gave glory to God every time he used it. When things happen in your life and you know it's a God thing, give God the glory. He said, interpreting dreams is God's business. Go ahead and tell me your dreams. So both the cupbearer and the baker told Joseph the dreams. Now the cupbearer, his dream is easy. See, Joseph said, hey, you know, here's what's going to happen. In a few days you're going to be released. You're going to be restored. It's all going to be good. And don't forget me when you get out. The baker said, oh, man, that's fantastic. Here, tell me about my dream. He said, brother, you're going to die. Joseph told the cupbearer, he says, please remember me and do me a favor. When things go well for you, mention me to Pharaoh. How many times you know that when, when, you, when you help a brother out, sometimes when things start going for him, they forget you. People will let you down. God never will. Mention me to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. Pharaoh's birthday came. Three days later, and he prepared a banquet for all of his officials and staff, and he summoned his chief cupbearer and his chief baker to join the other officials. He restored them to the chief cupbearer to his former position. So he can again hand Pharaoh his cup. But Pharaoh impaled the baker, just as Joseph had predicted when he interpreted his dream. He probably brought kale again to the, the king. <laughs> That's what happened. Chief, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, thought all about Joseph never giving him another thought. Two full. Years later, forgot him for two years, two more years in prison, Joseph was faithful. Joseph was still a man of God. Joseph was still serving with his best. Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing on the bank of the Nile River. 
next morning, Pharaoh was very disturbed by his dream, so he called all the music, magicians and the wise men of Egypt. When Pharaoh told them his dream, not one of them could tell him what it meant. Finally, the chief's cupbearer spoke up and says, Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Today, I have been reminded of my failure. He told Pharaoh, Some time ago, you were angry with me, the chief baker, and you imprisoned us in the palace of the captain of the guard. One night, the chief baker and I each had a dream, and each dream had its own meaning. There was a young Hebrew man in, with us in prison who was a slave of the captain of the guard, and when he told him, our, when we told him our dreams, he told us what each of our dreams meant, and everything happened just as he predicted. Here's the thing. When somebody tells you they're a prophet of God, every time, everything will happen. I was restored to my position as cupbearer, and the chief baker was executed, and it fell on a pole, like that's a normal thing. <laughs> Pharaoh sent Joseph for Joseph at once, and he was quickly brought from the prison. <laughs> After he shaved and changed his clothes, he went in and stood before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, to Joseph, I had a dream last night. No one here can tell me what it means, but I heard that when you hear about a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph looked at him and said, it is beyond my power to do this, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. See, God wants to give you a yoke that is easy to carry. And again, he's giving glory to God. Now, can you imagine Joseph was still in prison for two years. Do you think he thought that this was going to happen? Probably not, because he'd been in prison a long time. But by being faithful at the right moment when God is ready, God does miraculous things. If you will have faith. You know, the Bible says, the twinkling of an eye, in the instant of a moment, we're going to be out of here. Jesus is going to return, we're out. Nobody's going to be thinking about it. Nobody's going to be pondering on it. Boy, right now, this is going to be it. It says nobody knows other than the Father when that thing is happening. But if you are ready with your relationship with Jesus Christ, God is going to do a miracle. Pharaoh goes on to tell Joseph about his dream. Joseph in turns and says, hey, man, you're going to have seven good years and seven bad years. During the good years, you need to store up so you will have plenty during the bad years. Do you know that is a fantastic biblical principle? If you will save a little bit every time in your personal finances, you pay God first, you give back to yourself some, and then you, you take care of the rest. If you will do those things, if you'll put a little bit back while things are going well, you will have enough while things aren't. If you waste and you spend everything that you have while you're, well, everything is going well, when the hard years come, because it says it'll rain on the just and the unjust, you will be in need during those times. Do you know right now in Egypt, they, they're finding all these ar archaeological facts about these silos and things that were built. And they're going, man, these people were the smartest people in the world because they were storing up. And then they had these ramens and they were taken care of. You know what? If you'll listen to God, God will take care of you every time. And he says in the, in the house of the wise, there are storehouses. Choice oil. What that is? He said, just put some back. Not, not so you can gather for yourself, but so you will have enough for you and then take care of others because that's what Egypt did. See, Egypt thought they were just taking care of themselves. But by letting God work through all of this, he saved the entire world. God does amazing things. And Pharaoh said, find an intelligent, wise man and put him in charge of everything. And that's what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh put this man in charge of everything. He promoted him to the highest position in the land. And you know what happened after that? His father and mother, I mean, his, his mother was dead, but his father and his brothers came to Egypt, and they all bowed down before him. Joseph's dreams were fulfilled. Because when God 
speaks to you. It may take a long time to get to where God is telling you that he is going to take you, but he always takes you there. Every time. God never fails you. He never lets you down. He is always faithful. Now, I'm going to tell you about this. We may read about that, but you go, man, that's a fantastic story. But how does that work in the real world? Tell you how that works in the real world. If you will be faithful in your relationship, see, Joseph could have walked through life and he could have never checked on anybody. He could have never done his work into the Lord. He could have been sour. He could have been bitter. He could have been a complainer and he could have been a gossiper. He could have done all these things and he would have had the right. We would have said, Amen. I mean, you've been beaten by your brother, thrown in a pit, sold into slavery, lied to, thrown into prison. You probably got a reason to complain and groan. That ain't what Joseph did. Joseph did his work unto the Lord. And he continued on. And he never gave up on the dream that God had given him. And he was faithful in the relationships that God put in his way. Even the small ones that he didn't even understand. He just, he looked at somebody who'd been thrown into prison with him. And he said, hey, how was your day? God worked through. This week, some of y'all may have heard that we had this little mortgage thing going on with Davidson County about our property taxes. Y'all know about that? Y'all remember that? Pastor Jack, before he left, said we got this little issue with the property taxes. that you have. 
don't want to be in this carpool with this guy. <laughs> but we formed a great relationship over the years. It's like, I don't like to carpool with anybody. I like to drive myself. <laughs> but we did it. We formed a relationship together. And this guy had formed a relationship with somebody else. Did I have any idea that God was going to use that almost 10 years later for his glory? But let me tell you what's happened since then. I said, hey, we've got, there's a whole bunch of things messed up. We've got all this paperwork we need to do. He said, oh, don't worry about it. Let me get that done for you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Within about five minutes, not only was it filled out, but it was in my email box. I didn't even have to fill it out. I said, hey, man. Yeah, praise God. He said, There is no man, there's nothing 